Hi, my name is EJ Massa. My firstborn son loves Mario games on the Nintendo Switch. But some Mario games, Nintendo has decided not to port to the system. And he's been asking about them, but has no access to them. Well, a couple of months ago during Amazon Day, this mini PC, the SER5, was on sale, and I thought, wow, this might be a fun emulation box that I can load up with many games that are missing from the Nintendo Switch. He has a winter birthday right before Christmas, so this is a perfect gift for him. You've heard of beans for my dad, but how about configuring a mini PC to do emulation for my son? Doesn't quite roll off the tongue as well. I follow the YouTube channel Retro Game Core, and he sings the praises of Bodicera, an emulation front end for these mini PCs, or I guess PCs in general. So I decided to set up this mini PC with Bodicera. FYI, these are the specs of this PC, if that's important to you. These specs should be enough to emulate up to the Wii U at native resolution, which is what I'm looking for. Also during Prime Day, hard drives are much cheaper, so I picked up one of those too. This mini PC has an internal NVMe hard drive, which I'll keep the Windows OS on, but the mini PC has a slot for SSDs like this one, and that will house the Bodicera OS. Opening up the box and inside you have manuals, which I'll promptly throw into the trash. The mini PC itself, which is really solid. I love the metal case. It's also smaller than I expected. I don't know. I know it's a mini PC, but I didn't expect it to be, you know, this mini. It has a very premium feel to it. You have two USBs and a USB-C in the front, along with a headphone jack. And along the back, you have a couple more USBs, an Ethernet jack, and two HDMI ports. There's also a box that includes monitor clips, an HDMI cable in case you don't have 20 of them around, and there's a power brick which is almost as big as half the PC. All in all, solid construction on the device, but I wish there was a USB-C port on the back. Booting it up for the first time, it has Windows 11, and I set it up as you would any standard PC. One thing I love is the lack of bloatware. I remember I got this Samsung PC many years ago, and it was loaded with useless app upon useless app. So loading up a fresh PC with no bloat is very satisfying. All right, now to add some bloat. I installed Steam and a few games like Final Fantasy Pixel Remasters. And let's not forget Skyrim. Skyrim plays pretty great. So if you want to use this as a Skyrim machine, it can do that. And really, if you have Skyrim, do you need anything else? But let's install Bodicera onto this hard drive. And before I install the hard drive itself into the system physically, I'll use this USB dock to do the initial setup. I went to Bodicera.org and downloaded the most recent version of the OS, which at the time of this writing is version 35. Using Belana Etcher, I flash the OS onto the SSD. It'll warn you that it's a big hard drive, but just ignore it. It's a stupid robot. Ignore its stupid robot warnings. Once Bodicera is flashed on there, it's time to fire it up. On the Windows side of the mini PC, with the hard drive plugged in, I searched Recovery Options, clicked it, and selected Advanced Startup, and restart it. It'll restart and give you the option to use a device to boot. I'll select UEFI removable device and nothing happens. It doesn't work. Actually, I already knew there was issues with this mini PC and this version of Bodicera because of a wonderful review by Retro Game Core. However, this issue is resolved in version 36. So if you're watching this and version 36 is out, it should work with this particular PC. So in the meantime, I'll load this up on a different PC and download the beta of version 36 of Bodicera. So let's do that. On a different PC, I did the same steps with recovery options and advanced startup. Use a device and select USB. And there we go. Bodicera is initiated. Now to install the beta version of Bodicera 36, open the menu, scroll down to updates and downloads, then down to update tight and change stable to beta then start update. And once downloaded, I restarted the system. So now it has the beta version of Bodicera 36, which should work on the B-Link SER5. Before I load this up on the B-Link, I wanna look at my UI options because this one is a little bland to me. Again, I went to updates and download in the menu, went to themes and downloaded a few that looked interesting. I picked a theme and made sure to shut down the system through the menu. 
Let's see if Botticera now boots on the SER5. Again, went to the advanced startup and selected the drive. Excuse the glitchy screen, my capture card hates bio screens for some reason. And huzzah! Botticera starts up on the B-Link machine. I took a look at a few of the themes, but ultimately, I like the Alex Full NX theme. Now that it works, I went to my stash of Nintendo ROMs. Don't ask me how I got those ROMs. Don't ask me. I won't tell you. This video is for educational purposes only, Nintendo. No, if this is real. It's all a dream. Just go away. Leave me alone. I put a very carefully curated list of games onto a USB stick. I don't want to overwhelm my kid with a huge library, nor do I want him to accidentally find Mortal Kombat, so I stuck with a small library of kid-friendly Mario titles he might like. Back to Botticera, I plugged in that USB stick of games and pressed F1 on a connected keyboard to bring up the file explorer. And you see all the folders where you can put the respective ROMs. I navigated to my ROMs on my USB stick, copied the files, and then pasted them into the respective folder on Botticera. For example, 3DS games go into the 3DS folder under ROMs. Groundbreaking. Laurels for spring. Groundbreaking. And I did that for all of my games. And when I was done, I clicked Close Window under File. In the Botticera menu under Game Settings, I then selected Update Game List to get those ROMs to populate the menus. And while I'm here, I went down to Game Rendering and Shaders and turned off Smooth Game Settings because I want those pixels so sharp that they can cut me. And usually after I do any change that I want to be permanent, I like to restart the system so it saves. Now there's a bunch of non-Nintendo game collections and I don't want them around confusing my child. After all, this is a Nintendo household, goddammit. I went down to game collection settings, selected systems displayed, and then unchecked all the consoles I don't want to appear. Then I tried the universal scraper for the box art and it didn't quite work. Just kind of hung up. But at this point, I got distracted because I was a bit annoyed that the PlayStation controller button markings were everywhere. This is a Nintendo household, goddammit. To change this, I went to interface settings, theme configuration, menu icons, and changed it to Super Nintendo. Okay, now back to scraping. Since I curated a small list of games, it was pretty easy to download the box art for each one individually by going to the game options, then scrape, then selected the box art source that I liked best. Then I repeated this for each game. For some of my Wii games that had strange titles given to them when I copied them from my collection of discs on Homebrew Wii Channel, I changed it to a more searchable form by going to game options and editing the metadata. I would change it or simplify the name so that the box art would search properly. Another minor thing, but my son is used to Nintendo systems, where A is accept and B is cancel. This is a Nintendo household, goddammit. So I went to menu, system settings, front end developer options, then toggled the switch A and B buttons in emulation station. Next, I add all the BIOS files I need. You can Google Botticera BIOS files and you may find some results that'll work for you. I just copied them all into the BIOS folder. Next, I played around with the configuration settings and the standalone apps. For example, in the 3DS emulator Citra, I thought 3x resolution, which makes it around 720p, worked best. I tested it with Super Mario 3D Land and it played great. I highly recommend the YouTube channel Botticera Nation, which has lots of videos to help you fine tune the settings to suit your needs. I played around with settings in Dolphin and tuned them to my taste. You can also change the rendering resolution in Emulation Station, and that will override whatever you have in the standalone app. One great thing about Botticera is it supports the Mayflash Dolphin bar natively. Just make sure it's on mode 4 and you can press the sync button on the bar and on the Wiimote and it will work flawlessly. I found that it's a great solution for upscaled Wii gameplay. Looks and plays great. This is especially awesome because for some reason Nintendo didn't include Super Mario Galaxy 2 in the Mario 3D All-Stars pack. Next up I tried Wii U and this worked really great at native resolution. Although Gabriel already has Mario 3D World on the Switch, it's great to have the option to play it here. 
Likewise, Mario Kart 8 looks good as well. One quirk was that the audio output didn't always work through the HDMI, so I fiddled with the system settings, went down to audio output, and switched it from auto to manually selecting the HDMI output. Okay, so now that my Bodicera image is tuned exactly how I want it, it's time to install the SSD permanently into the device. It's super easy. Just loosen all the screws on the bottom of the mini PC. I use the holes here to kind of pry open the bottom, revealing the SSD slot grafted to the bottom cover. Just slid my Bodicera loaded SSD in there, clicks in nicely. You'll notice that this device comes loaded with some name brand RAM and hard drives. Crucial and Kingston are known quantities, so it's nice to see. Finally, I closed it up and tightened the screws back in. Then I started the PC and pressed F7 to load the boot menu. Selected Enter Setup, paged over to the Boot tab, then selected Hard Disk as boot option number one. Then when I turn on the device, it will automatically load my Bodicera image. Then I press F4 to save and exit. Now it loads perfectly into Bodicera. But now I see more opportunities to customize. That boot image isn't my favorite. You'll notice it's an image and not a video splash screen because since I plugged the SSD in to that slot, it boots up so fast that it skips the video. And some of these images that represent the systems, they're not exactly kid friendly. Look, I love Bayonetta as much as the next guy, but I don't necessarily want to expose my son to, uh, her guns. So for the splash image, I stole some artwork off of Google image search. This one looks nice. And then I brought it into Photoshop to customize it for my son. So every time he boots up the system, he sees this personalized screen. So I saved it as a PNG and put it on this thumb drive to load it into the mini PC. Back in the file management system by pressing F1, I went to the share folder, press this up arrow to go to the parent folder, clicked on USR, Share, Bodicera, and Splash. Now that I'm here, I pressed F3 to do a side-by-side -side view with another window, navigated to where my custom splash screen is, copied that splash screen over to that folder, commented out that current splash screen, and then renamed my custom one with the same name as the old one. Now this will revert back to the old splash screen if you restart, so I went to Applications, Xterm, and typed Bodicera, dash save dash overlay and that should save the custom splash screen also note that if you update the firmware it will get rid of your custom splash screen and you'll have to do this process over again then i quit and restarted and one splash screen is changed but not the other theme splash screen so i'll change that to the same thing as well in the share folder i went to themes Clicked on the theme I'm using. Now, every theme is different, but my theme stores its images in assets and then in arts. Lots of arts in here. And in a similar process, I found the splash screens, replaced them with my custom one, and I also found all the menu art files for all the game systems and replaced them with more kid-friendly Mario-themed images that I created in Photoshop. And after I did all that, I made sure to restart the system to save those changes. And boom, there we go. Custom splash screen and all of my art populated all the correct menus. Perfect for the Mario obsessed six year old. Then I printed out sheets of the box art to the games I included in the system because when I give this to my boy, I'm sure he'll be confused by a mini PC when he opens the present. I packed it with these sheets of box art so he knows right away that this PC is loaded with fun. I gave it to him for his birthday present and he's having a blast playing it. He especially likes Super Mario 3D Land. So this was kind of a dry video documenting my setup. I thought it'd be fun to put together my whole process just in case you picked up a mini PC of your own and to give you some ideas on how to customize it for yourself. If that's the case, I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments and check out Retro Game Course channel for lots of great mini PC reviews, handheld reviews, and general Bodicera setup videos. And check out Bodicera Nation for very specific Bodicera topics. Have a wonderful holiday, and until next time, bye.